everyone. Welcome to another episode of Five on the Frontline produced by AIHA. I'm your host, Mark Ames. President Biden has pledged to quickly reopen schools during his first 100 days in office, recognizing the critical roles of in-person learning to students, parents, and communities. But there are a lot of challenges standing in the way as school leaders seek to help students while protecting them and school staff. Our guest today is Ron Nazoy. Ron is the CEO of the National Association of Secondary School Principals and previously served as Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy and Programs at the U.S. Department of Education. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thanks, Mark. Glad to be here. Ron, a couple of questions for you. First, what concerns do school leaders have as President Biden seeks to quickly reopen schools? And the next is, what are school leaders doing to ease the concerns of students, parents, teachers, and other school staff about reopening? Great question. So, you know, regarding the first question, uh, what concerns do school leaders have about uh, doc, uh, Dr. Biden, President Biden, excuse me, President Biden's uh, plan to reopen schools in this first 100 days? Obviously, the health and safety of everyone in school is our first concern, and that's always the priority for principals. But of course, that takes on a whole nother meaning in the in the context of the pandemic. Um, and you know, everybody wants kids back in school, especially educators. You know, we do the work because we love being with kids and helping them learn. Um, and so, this is really about finding the balance where we can maximize both well-being and safety as well as learning. And we've been talking about that as an association since the summer when we issued a, a series of restart and recovery guides uh, sponsored by the Wallace Foundation. But you know, the thing, the, the harsh reality is, unfortunately, as, as is too often the case, kids who live in poverty and other vulnerable populations are the ones who suffer the most. And schools have been intensifying efforts to reach kids and keep them fed, keep them healthy, and keep them engaged during the pandemic. And so the Biden administration's goal of all K-8 students back in school in the first 100 days is ambitious, no doubt. And we've committed to working with the administration to meet it. At NASSP, we believe it's doable, but I think we have to take a moment to talk about the appropriate mitigation measures that must be in place in order for this to happen safely, effectively, and most importantly, productively. So, you know, we say at, at the association that, you know, you can't just buy into the goal unless you buy into the costs. They're, they're real costs to reopening, not just in uh, equipment and PPE and materials, but in time and labor. So for example, you know, the public may not be fully aware, but I'm happy to share here, like in schools that have been open, principals, you know, who are highly trained and committed instructional leaders, you know, have been spending a whole bunch of their time doing COVID management. You know, they're not necessarily spending all the time they need to be working with teachers on learning issues. You know, they're doing stuff like contact tracing. They're enforcing mask and distance requirement. They're sanitizing wrestling mats and sports equipment with the electrostatic spray after evening tournaments. So my point here is that their time is spread out often to areas where they're not experts. You know, principals are experts at a lot of things, but they you know, we, we were not, we didn't go to principal school to be fully trained. We, we weren't tr fully trained in principal school on, you know, dealing with a global pandemic and modern uh, health and infectious diseases control. So, you know, they're gonna need a lot of support. They need now, and they're gonna continue to need a lot of support um, to help them, one, through clear guidance, making sure that they're, you know, one set of factual information that everybody's operating off of, and then two, with additional resources and supports to allow them to focus in on what they're best at, which is looking after the and advocating for the well-being of their students and success of their students on campuses, as well as the adults that they're responsible for. And finally, you know, the, this weekly testing that, that's being proposed, we love it. It's a great idea, but we, we also want to be really clear that that should not fall to, you know, school personnel solely to administer those tests. You know, keep in mind that many schools don't have dedicated school nurses, many districts don't have them either. And so, you know, again, we, we don't wanna set up a scenario where teachers and principals who will do whatever needs to be done. I mean, the, 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 let's just get this clear. Educators will do what needs to be done, but let's be responsible about it and make sure that they have the 
adequate staffing and supports and, and connections to uh, healthcare professionals to actually help them work through this so that we're not doing this by like on a hope and a prayer that we're doing it in the most scientifically based and you know current with modern uh, accepted practices as possible because then that allows the educators to focus on what they're the best at which is taking care of students and and, and delivering the best educational experience that we can for them 100 percent. thank you so much ron that is all the time we have for today but thank you for coming oh. on the show really appreciate it Thank you, Mark. I'm sorry. I got carried away with the answer there. Please. No, that was perfect. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Five on the Front Line is produced by AIHA. Please subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts and on AIHA's YouTube channel so that you don't miss a single episode. I'm Mark Ames, wishing you a safe and healthy day ahead.